Welcome to our streaming worship service of Trinity Baptist Church. I'm Pastor John Wheat, and we are blessed that you've chosen today to come and worship with us in this way. We expect that you will be encouraged by our worship and song as well as our reflection in Scripture. Currently, we're in step one of our Trinity Three Step of coming back onto our campus for worship and Bible study. What that means is on Sunday morning at 8.30 and at 10 and at 11.30, our campus is open for corporate worship. We are encouraging the wearing of face masks coming into our worship center and out of our worship center. We're also encouraging families to sit together. Therefore, there will not be any child care presently during step one. And we also are allowing an overflow area in our Christian Life Center as well as in our chapel. We hope that our time together today will be a blessing to all. And we are grateful for those who call themselves Trinity Baptist Church who will be together with us in worship corporately in person in this place, as well as for those who call themselves Trinity Baptist Church family who are going to wait and come back at a later date, continuing to connect with us through streaming and radio. Would you join us now as we connect to our worship service that is already in progress? Who have joined us to connect with us. Last week we began uh, lighting a candle just in honor and in semblance of our three services that we have that are now back on campus, our 830 service, our uh, 10 o'clock service and our 1130 service. The times have been adjusted right now while we're in this uh, process of step one, moving back onto the campus uh, to give some time and attention uh, for cleaning between our services. But we, we had lit a candle representing each one of our services, but notice it's one candle. We're just one church. We're not three churches. And I, what a, a great time to reemphasize that for all of us to recognize that we come together with three opportunities of worship in different styles, but it's one church called Trinity Baptist Church that honors the Lord and lifts his name up. And we want to serve in his name and so grateful for the opportunity to do that. As we begin our worship uh, today, and as we did last week, and as we will for the next couple of weeks, we want to begin in prayer. We want to prepare ourselves. God has a word to say to us. And, and sometimes we have to do the hard work of pushing outside to those doors and leaving in the parking lot the things sometimes that we bring in with us. Uh, whether it be attitude or conflict or whatever, or we bring those things with us and give them to the Lord and just release them for a little while so that we can truly listen to what the Lord has to say to us today. And so I want us just to spend a little time preparing our hearts. There'll be some music being played and give you a time to pray, prepare yourself, and then I'll lead us in prayer and we'll continue in our worship today. So let's join together as we pray. This morning in this room and through the airways of streaming and of radio, there are people who are connecting as a corporate body of believers under your name. We're here because of you. We're here because you've done good things in our lives this past week, and we want to say thank you. We're here because we have some things coming up that we need your help with, and we say we need you. And today, as we come, we know you have a word to share with us. And so open our ears, open our hearts to hear and receive your word. And then give us the ability through your spirit and the empowerment that comes to act upon what you say. That we would find ourselves obedient to the words you have for us. Father, we continue to pray for our nation, for our community, for our state our church thank you for your blessing thank you for all the help that you brought our way and even pray today even for those who are still in need of your care God we entrust ourselves to you and ask that you would speak to us in such a way that we can't help but hear you and do what it is that you say and we lift this to you in Jesus name to be 
precious in this world. There is none more so than Jesus himself. Let's stand together. I want to read this scripture together, if you would, please. And uh, if you can see it, good. If not, you probably got it memorized. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where the moths and the vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. Let's sing together. Did you know that during these times of social distancing that you and I are going through, the pastoral care ministry here at Trinity Baptist Church is busier than ever. Our army of volunteers is busy making phone calls, writing cards of encouragement and hope, also picking up prescriptions and groceries for those that are unable to leave their home. The only talent you need to be a part of this ministry is being willing to share God's love with these precious people. Give myself or Sharon a call about being a part of this ministry at Trinity Baptist Church, and I promise you that God will make you a blessing and you in turn will be blessed. Did your children ever tell you that they were bored and you found a solution for them very quickly? I know in these days that you've been at home and had to stay inside that you may have found some of that boredom, but uh, 
do as Frank said, give him, give Sharon a call, and they will take care of that boredom for you, but it'll have a kingdom purpose behind it. We are glad that you are here today, and I want to draw your attention to a few things. One, we do anticipate uh, step two as we continue to reopen campus. We do anticipate step two soon, so I encourage you to stay tuned for that. Uh, you can go to our website, tbck.org. One of the first things you'll see is a video from Pastor John. It'll pop up and give an explanation of what those steps are. As well, uh, this Wednesday is our drive through an opportunity for parents of children and teens to come through and pick up materials for their children, for those teenagers uh, in these days of boredom. Uh, but there's also something for us adults as well. Uh, those of you who use a curriculum like Joy Seekers or Jubilee, for example, that curriculum will be available. There'll be magazines that uh, you are normally on our stands as you come in the door, devotionals for men, women, and uh, just generic devotionals as well. So I encourage you to come by and pick those up. Also, there will be an opportunity for you to purchase one of the uh, few remaining cookbooks that we have. Uh, last count, we have, we're down to about 90, so I encourage you, if you're looking for something good to give away or if you simply didn't get an order in, this would be a great chance for you to pick up your cookbook. 3.30 to 5.30, Trinity drive through this Wednesday. Well, let me address a couple of giving issues for you. We're accustomed to having a plate passed in front of us, not only at the dinner table, but here in, in pews and in-house. And, but our, our giving will take place a little differently, at least for a few weeks. You'll find at the middle of the aisle there is a box. And you, at the end of the service, will have an opportunity, if you've brought your offering with you, to get up and put that in that offering box. There are online giving opportunities available as well and you can connect with us in that way. May is a month in which we recognize and participate in offering for uh, relieving hunger uh, in throughout our state and throughout our world. So I encourage you next week to consider what it is you might give in that regard. That offering will be divided in two ways. Texas Baptist, we uh, work with them in many, many different levels. One half of that offering will go to the Texas Baptist Offering for Hunger Relief that's used here in our community, throughout our state, even around our world in various initiatives and ministries of Texas Baptists. The other half of that will be uh, given through Baptist World Relief. And, and as you know, there are many who... Uh, Hunger is just their normal way of life, but even so, in this day and time, many more are experiencing hunger because of the situation in our world. So we encourage you, be a part uh, with what God has blessed you with and share with those who are in hunger. May God bless your day, our time, together this morning. Has anybody brought a new puppy into your home recently? That's probably confession time that you're not getting as much sleep as maybe you would like. You know how you do and you have the hot water bottle and the alarm clock to, to help that puppy find something comforting so that they can rest. You know, uh, we're going to sing a song in just a moment that talks about the place of quiet rest near heart of God. There's something comforting about hearing our Father's heartbeat. That heartbeat happens as we see the sunrise every morning faithfully. As we take a breath and we, we, we take in this fresh air and we sustain life, when you hear the thunder and you see the rain come and nourish the earth, there's a quiet place. It's a place for us to draw close to our Father, near to the heart of God. Let's stand and sing, please.
I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. But sometimes I wonder what he can do through me. No great success to show. No glory on my own, yet in my weakness he is there to let me know. His strength is perfect when our strength is gone. He'll carry us when we can't carry on. Raised in his power, the weak become strong. His strength is perfect. His strength is perfect. We can only know the power that he holds when we truly see how deep our weakness goes. His strength in us begins when ours comes to an end. He hears our humble cry and proves again. His strength is perfect when our strength is gone. He'll carry us when we can't carry on. Raised in his power, the weak become strong. His strength is perfect. His strength is perfect. His strength is perfect when our strength is gone. He'll carry us when we can't carry on. Raised in strong. His strength is perfect. His strength is perfect. Raised in his power, the weak become strong. His strength is perfect. His strength is perfect. Thank you, Larry, for reminding us his strength is perfect when our strength is gone. Or even when our strength is a little bit there, his strength is still more reliable than our little bit uh, in his perfection. What a, what a joy to remember. You know, over the last several weeks, I've heard the word essential more over the last eight weeks than I have over the last eight years. Uh, we have tried to determine what is essential and what is not essential, and businesses wanted to get that term attached to their operations so they could continue to work as they had previously. 
those who did not get that word essential had to think about how they did what they did in a different way, sometimes shutting their shops, shutting down their businesses, sending people home. All of us, to some degree, trying to find out how we work from home and do those types of things. We've even gone so far as not just being designated essential by somebody else, but we've tried in our own way to determine, in our own opinion, what is essential and what is not essential. And we all have differing opinions. In fact, there's a college coach who decided and persuaded one of his graduating seniors was graduating. He persuaded him and decided to ask him to stay on for a year to help him find good college football players. And so the graduating senior said, sure, I'll, I'll stay on coach for another year. And he said, what kind of players are we looking for? And the coach said, well, son, you know, in a football game, you have those guys that get knocked down and they stay down. They don't get up. And the college graduate said, we're not looking for that kind of all-week coach. He says, no, we're not looking for that kind of guy. Coach said, you know, there's, there's another group that they get knocked down in the football game and they get up. And they get knocked down again, and they stay down the second time. And he said, Coach, it's not, we're not looking for those kind of guys. I always said, no, we're not looking for those kind of guys either. He said, but there's another group that when they get knocked down in a football game, they get up. And they get knocked down again, and they get up. And they get knocked down again. And every time they get knocked down, they get up. He said, Coach, that's the kind we're looking for. He says, no, we're not looking for that kind either. He said, well, what kind of guys are we looking for? He says, we're looking for the guys that's knocking everybody down. <laughs> Our idea of essential can be different. We, we think about what's essential, and as we think about these essential elements of today, those businesses that we've needed in order to survive, We've also come to understand there have been some things that every one of us have chosen not to do because we couldn't do it. We actually lived through no March Madness. The professional basketball league, you know, they have decided not to play. The baseball didn't start up except in Korea with masks and no one in the stands, if you've seen any of that. And, and we, we've missed some things, but you know what? we found out that those things really aren't essential, even though we chose to enjoy them. There are other things that we have not done over the past eight weeks that may have been very beneficial for us, and we're glad that some of them are coming back, like haircuts and those kind of things. But they still weren't essential for us. So when we come to the idea there are many people who have differing opinions as to what is essential, but not only what is essential, but who is essential. This morning, I want us to consider there's one who overrides them all, and that's God. God overrides anyone and anything that we would consider to be essential. Now, right off the bat, there are some people, if they were listening today, and they probably aren't because they have no desire to listen to anything that God would say, but if there were, they would discredit God right away because they don't think God has anything to say because he is non-existent, he doesn't exist, or what he has to say isn't very important. But that's not the word we have in the church. The thoughts that we have in the church is that, yes, God is essential. In fact, we would say this, that God is the essential. And underneath him come everything else, that he is at the top, at the foremost, and nothing will compare to him, and nothing will, will be next to him. He is the essential for us, and anything that he says is essential because it comes from who he is. So, so this morning, we recognize that, that God is the essential and that he has something to say. And if he is the essential and everything that he says is essential because it comes from who he is, we ought to listen to what it is he has to say. Well, God has a word for the world today. And I believe God has a specific word for the church today. To begin with, God's word to the world. 
Uh, we're grateful for all that are here on our campus and worship with us today. We started at 8.30 and we'll conclude at a... Uh, 1230 and we're grateful for all who have been here we're grateful for all who have chosen to stream with us in our service and if by chance anyone here or anybody who is streaming and you are still considered a part of the world I want you to listen that God has a word for you and this is the word the word is that God gives life he is the creator of life he is the sustainer of life and he is the rewarder of life there is something precious about holding a baby, of recognizing that God in his infinite wisdom and in his ultimate creation created babies. And babies are birthed into our world. On Mother's Day, we got to celebrate the birth of three children within our church, or one within our church, and two that had grandparents or great-grandparents within our church. There's just something precious about the gift of life. Whether your mom or dad or aunt or uncle or grandma or grandpa, there's something special to that. And we would even go as far as to say in the church, those of us who are believers in Jesus Christ, we would recognize that even at the closing of what we know life on this side of heaven, that there's something precious about that passing from this place to next. And if you've experienced, we've had some church members who have lost loved ones. We've lost some church members. I say we lost them. They've gone on to a greater place. We know where they are. We still have services to remember here that are coming up, but there's something even precious in that transition from this place to the next because of the life that they lived in Christ. And God is the creator of all of that. God is the creator of life. God is a sustainer of life. We, we on the earth, <clears throat> are tilted at just the right angle, spinning at just the right speed so that life can sustain itself. If, if we weren't tilted at the right angle or spinning faster or slower, then we would have all kinds of chaos. But because God put it together in his order of creation, we are tilted and spinning exactly the way we need to. A degree closer to the sun or a degree further away from the sun, we would either burn up or we would freeze to death. We are exactly where we need to be, and God has created in his creation to sustain life in that way. But not only is he sustaining life in creation, he sustains life in you and in me. He gives us all the things we need for life and for godliness. He meets all of our needs to the glorious riches of his son, Jesus Christ. And so for those of us who know Jesus, we know that the, every need that we have is met in Christ. And our life is sustained in that way. God is the sustainer of life through creation and in even ourselves as we find ways that we can sustain and take care of ourselves, but not only ourselves, as we will next week, we'll take up an offering to help provide food and resources for people that are around the world. The offerings that we have given here in our church, our mission team in the Dominican Republic has been able to receive some of that offering and give to people in the Dominican Republic. This year in the Ukraine, there's another offering that's taken that we'll be giving to the World Baptist World Relief that's going to be going there. So lots of ways of helping other people. God sustains us, and we have opportunity to be a part of that. God is the giver of life. He is the sustainer of life, and God is the rewarder of life. One of these days for all of us that know Jesus, there's a day coming that the reward, the inheritance that's reserved for us, that's there, will be just gifted to us and we will receive it completely and totally in his presence. Now, we're getting a part of that now, but not the fullness of it, because it's reserved for there. But there's a reward that's coming for those who follow Christ in their life that comes one day that we cannot compare it to anything on this side. So God is the giver of life. He's the sustainer. He is the rewarder of life. And here is the word that God has for the world today, and that word is relationship. That God desires to have a relationship with you so that he can continue to give you life and sustain life and to reward life. Outside of a relationship with Jesus Christ, you're in trouble. 
And so God has done everything in Christ to make it possible for you to come to be with him and to know him and understand him and have the Holy Spirit living inside of you to discern and understand scripture. God has done everything possible for that to take place. And it happens in relationship to him through Jesus Christ, his son and our savior. And so the word today to the world that God has to say is relationship. Do you have it? I have to give it. All you have to do is receive it. But as I said earlier, there's another word that God has for the church. Let me read this verse before we move away from God's word to the world. In Ephesians, where we'll be here in a moment anyway, the first chapter, verse 7 and 8, listen to these words. In him, in Christ, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. God has given relationship option to the world. Uh, we used to do an experiment, uh, a little illustration in, in youth group meetings where we would ask students to come up and have a, just a big bowl of, of, of pinto beans that were uncooked and say, take out, if each pinto bean represented a blessing of God, take out how many blessings you think God wants to bless you with. And some students would walk up and they'd get a handful of blessings. Some would get one, some would get two. And they go sit back down, and we would walk over to them. We can only do it one time. We say, let me show you the blessings that God wants to give to you. And we take the entire bowl of pinto beans uncooked and just pour it over. We only did that once because we want to pick them all back up and do it again. But God is there to give blessing to us, and he does that in relationship. But the word that he has for the church, we're going to read in Ephesians chapter 6, beginning in verse 10. If you found that in your Bibles, would you stand with me this morning? As I read for us, Ephesians chapter 6, beginning in verse 10 and reading through verse 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Let's pray together. Father, this morning as we lift up your word, our prayer is that we would hear the word you have to share with us as your church. That we would take the word that you share with us and place it in our lives and recognize it and find it there in such a way that it is our response back to you as we're obedient to it. Continue to lead us in truth. Continue to lead us to the point of response. And thank you for the empowerment that you give to us through your Holy Spirit to do it. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're looking at your Bible in Ephesians chapter 6, you would recognize that chapter 6 is the last chapter of Ephesians. There's not an Ephesians 7. So these are the final words. These are the last words of Paul to the church in Ephesus. But don't, don't think that this is something that's of little importance. This isn't the tail end, wrapping up, sweeping up the little bit. No, I think probably more than that, this is more important than anything else to make sure that he under, that you understand this is what God wants you to have. As he's gone through the rest of the book of Ephesians, here he comes, he says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, in his mighty power. Be strong in the Lord. With all the things that he said previously to the church in Ephesus, he says, be strong, not in yourself. Don't, don't go down and get a gym membership and work out three, four times a day. Some of we could use that. I know that's good for us, but that's not what he's talking. Be strong in the Lord. The Lord is already strong. His strength is perfect and our strength is gone. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the full armor of the Lord. Put on the full armor of God. 
so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. There's a, there's a battle going on that we don't understand. And it's real easy. It is so easy for us, even as, as people who walk in the Lord, to get sidetracked just a little bit and forget about the spiritual war that's taking place and, and forget to be tuned up and alert and ready to go because those, it's out there. We, we, we don't see it with our eyes. We may hear it and feel it and sense it with our spiritual heart, but we might not see it with our eyes. There's a battle going on that we're not always aware of. And, and Paul is saying to the church, you need to know that there's a battle going on and you need to be ready and prepared for it because it's coming your way. Be strong in the Lord. It's his fight to win. It's not ours. It's his. his he fights it with us by living in us. But it's his fight. And guess what? He's capable of winning, and he's already won. But he's going to continue to win as we make ourselves available to him. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So we look at these words, put on the whole armor of God so that you can take your stand. Our struggle, it's not against flesh and blood. It gets, it's against the powers of the dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Put on this full armor. When do you get your full armor? Do you get your first piece of armor at the first vacation Bible school that you attended? And then you wait another year, you get your next piece of armor when you're old enough to walk and your next piece of armor. Maybe when you're, when you're 20, 25, 30, you build your pieces of armor as, as you build your, your castle or you build your house. Or No, you get the pieces of armor at the moment in which you receive Jesus Christ in your life as your Lord and Savior. God gives you these pieces and you need these pieces because there's a battle going on that we're not going to be able to stand unless we have them ready and usable where you would think this is going to be a, a, a sermon over these pieces of armor. Well, they are in a sense, but we're not going to take each one and break them all down. But we do want to mention them because this battle that's taking place, it's not against flesh and blood. It's not something that we see. There's something that's taking place even we might not even be aware of sometimes, but sometimes we will be aware of it, and we have spiritual armor to wear that we need to use in our defense and in the offense of the kingdom. These pieces of armor says, stand strong in the Lord, stand in his strength, put on the full armor. We don't get one piece, one, you know, we get it all at the same time. We, we, we have it, put it on, put on the belt of truth around your waist. We'll come back just a moment to a little bit of these pieces. Put on the belt of truth, put on the breastplate of righteousness. Have your feet shod with the gospel of peace. Take up the, the shield of faith, the, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit. We, we think of those six pieces. In fact, you can go to the Baptist bookstore or Mardell's, and they will sell you the pieces of the armor. And they'll give you those six pieces, but they missed one. They missed a piece of armor. And it's the piece of armor we're going to emphasize today. The piece of armor that they missed was the piece of armor called prayer. Prayer. Without prayer, in fact, some have said without the essentialness of prayer, the other essential pieces of armor are useless. Now, I don't know if we could break that down and really walk away with a theological understanding in that day, other than to say this the truth that we wear is not our truth, it's God's truth, it's not my truth. The breastplate that I wear, it's not my breastplate. My, 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 my skin's on the other side of the breastplate. The breastplate are the colors of who I'm wearing. It's the army with which I belong. In fact, it's Christ's righteousness that God sees and not me. So the breastplate is not mine. It is Jesus' breastplate. The, 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 whatever I take with me is not my peace. It's God's peace that I take with me. So my feet are shod with his peace as I go. It's not my shield of faith. It's not how much faith I can muster up on my own. No, it's, it's the faith. It's the shield of faith that's there that extinguishes the darts of the evil one. The helmet of salvation, it's not my salvation. I can't earn it. I didn't do anything for it just to receive it. It's God's salvation. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, they're not my words. Somebody else wrote that. God inspired them to write it. Everything that we have in place is something that's been given to us and we use them, and we're responsible in them, but notice prayer. Prayer is what you do. Prayer is what we do. 
God calls us to pray. God makes time for us to pray. But prayer is our part. That's what we engage in and is most essential as we think about these spiritual pieces of armor that we're to put on to stand in this spiritual warfare that's taking place. I think about prayer in this sense. When we think about the crucifixion of Jesus and all the details that went on with the crucifixion, we've just come off of uh, several weeks ago, we, we were coming away from the resurrection and Easter. And, and we, we talked about several details during that time that we had. But if we were to go back and look at the resurrection scene and the resurrection elements that were taking place, one thing happened when Jesus died on the cross. In Matthew 27, verse 50, it said, And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. And the next verse says this, at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now, what's the significance of a torn curtain in the temple? Is it just that something got knocked over and broken? Is it just coincidence that, yeah, that's just the byproduct of an earthquake that took place when Jesus died and, and other things were taking place? As well? No, there's deep significance for this curtain being torn and where it was torn. It wasn't torn from the bottom up. It was torn from the top down. God opened up the difference and the distinction that was keeping people away from him. We no longer need a high priest we have the ultimate high priest sitting at the right hand of God right now, Jesus Christ, and he is there making intercession for us. And so we need no longer a high priest to go into his presence. He has made us priests ourselves. We have access 24-7, 365, all the days of our lives. We have access to God's presence because that temple curtain had been torn. Prayer, essential Maybe the most essential piece that we have of the spiritual armor, and it doesn't even come with the set, but it's the most important piece we have. Pray, prayer. We think about what Henry Blackaby says. Henry Blackaby said it this way, that God speaks to us through the Bible. We understand that God speaks to us through his word. He, he gives us direction and guidance. We understand that God speaks to us through circumstances, the, the things that happen in life. We, we see things line up. We connect the dots, and we see what God is saying to us. We, we know that God speaks to us through the church, people in the church that we, we look to, and they give us advice and wisdom and counsel. Our Bible study leaders we, are, are those that are in leadership we trust. But God said, uh, Henry Blackley said that God speaks to us through the, 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 the Bible, through prayer circumstances in the church to reveal himself, his purposes, and his ways. Prayer is a way that God reveals himself to us. Prayer is so precious to us. It is a, an essential piece that we need to have in the church. Prayer is a most essential piece of armor. And when we think about prayer, here's some ideas, some distinctions of prayer that we should always keep in mind, that prayer is a lifestyle. Prayer is something that we are and not something that we do. It's not just... You pray before a meal, or you pray when you wake up, or you pray when you go to bed, or you pray when you need help, when something bad's happening. Those are prayers. Those are things we should be in prayer. But prayer is a lifestyle. It's something, it's who you are and not necessarily what you do. When we think about praying, I know that if you needed prayer and you wanted to call someone to pray for you, who would you call? Would you go through the index of the uh your your contacts and just hit a name i'm just gonna call. no he would distinctly call someone who had a lifestyle of prayer because you know they spend time talking to the lord and because they do god they have god's ear and, and we have god's ear we have access because that curtain has been torn but we know that prayer is not just something we do prayer is something that we are it is a lifestyle that we live prayer is to be unceasing in 1 Thessalonians 5.17, uh, this is a great verse that you could go home and memorize today. It says, pray continuously. You got it. Tell Kelly that that's a new prayer on our family uh, prayer request, and you've got, you get credit for that one today. Jesus wept is one of the famous, well, here's two words again, pray continuously. Pray continuously. 
don't just pray at specific times, but let prayer be a part of what you do as you do all the time. As you wake up and as you go to bed, pray as a part of what you do. And look and see what God is doing and agree with him and rejoice and have joy in what you see. Pray with urgency. Pray with urgency. When, when we wake up in the morning, it should be urgent that as we begin our day, it's not just what do I do next, but it ought to be, okay, Lord, what are you going to do in me next? And how can I allow you to be seen in me today? And so as we pray, it's something before our feet even touch the ground and we give strength to our legs to stand up out of bed to begin that day with the Lord to say, Lord, help me. Be in prayer. Be, have an urgent prayer. When something takes place, don't think that that's the last thing that we're going to do. Oh, by, by the way, I guess we can pray about it. No, Pray about it first. It ought to be the urgent thing that we do. When we go to bed, thanking the Lord for the evening that we've had. When something good happens for us, we, we're grateful. When, when something bad happens to us, we still find a way to be grateful. Which leads us to the next, pray with gratitude. Pray with gratitude. You know, one of the things about praying continuously, we have just recently had our National Day of Prayer. And many of you may have taken part in that Thursday or even a Wednesday before some uh, gatherings were taking place. And we have, isn't it wonderful that here in the United States we can have a day that we call the National Day of Prayer? We miss it. We don't need a National Day of Prayer. We need a daily prayer for the nation. We don't need our students to continue to see you at the poll. Let's get all the Christians together in one day and gather around the pole and recognize, oh, you, 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 know, you know how to spell Jesus? And you go, okay, great, we're all Christians together. And you do that one time. We ought to be doing that every day. We ought to be doing, as a church, we, we've got to pray continuously and to pray with gratitude. That, that when something good happens, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Look at what the good that you're doing. When something as a struggle comes our way, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord because you're going to make yourself known in this and at the end you're going to be on top and receive glory from it. And whatever's taking place, praying with gratitude. Wayne Hampton is here this morning. He is in the house. Wayne I don't know if you've appreciated, I have really appreciated all of our church members writing devotions for our church. This past Friday, Wayne wrote his devotion for our church and went out to emails. And, and, and oh, Wayne Comer's here. Wayne Hampton's not here. Sorry. Wrong Wayne. <laughs> Wayne Hampton. Wayne Hampton, this past Friday, wrote our devotion. And Wayne is an accomplished author. He, he's written poems. He's uh, putting a book together, incredible, incredible writer. And in his thoughts, he, he began to think about, I'm going to list the things that I'm grateful for in the social distancing that's taking place and not being able to go to church. He and Christy, I know, will come back when they can. But, but I appreciate Wayne's words this past Friday in our devotion. He said in his list, he said, I began to make a list and I began to think about the things I'm grateful for. He said, I'm, I'm grateful for a home. Because there are a lot of people who don't have one. I'm grateful for food. Because a lot of people are hungry. I'm grateful for friends who will call me and check on me and family who will call me and check on me because not everybody has that. And what Wayne Hampton said, Wayne Hampton said, as he continued his list, his needs became smaller and smaller and smaller. And his prayers became larger and larger and larger. As we pray in gratitude Another thing that we ought to recognize as we think about prayer, prayer being a lifestyle, unceasing prayer, praying with urgency, praying with gratitude, but praying also in victory. Praying in victory. You know, if you want to be victorious in your prayer life, begin to pray for the things that God speaks about in his word. He who calls us is faithful. God is going to see those things that he is working in accomplished. He who began a good work will complete it in us until the day of Christ Jesus. God is faithful, praying in victory. God who calls us is faithful. Pray with the awareness that, that we know who wins in the end. We had another great encouragement come from another one of our church members, Helen Steele. She wrote an encouraging word to our church staff this past week. And the words were, you know, this COVID season that's going on, the uncertainty that's all around. It's kind of like, it's kind of like going to a movie after you've read a book. 
And she went on to explain that in a movie, when everyone's sitting there, the patrons are there, that have purchased tickets for the movie, and you're watching the movie on the screen, and all of a sudden the music changes, something's fixed to happen. And there's an anxious moment on the screen. You don't know what's going to happen. Is, are they going to be okay? Is someone going to be hurt? Is, gonna, is it going to turn? Is, is the whole the, the thought on the movie going to turn and go in a different direction? You know something's about to happen, and so you're just wondering. You're on the edge of your seat unless you've read the book. If you read the book, you're not as angst as everyone else because you know what the outcome's going to be. And so when we go to pray, we pray in confidence, knowing that God has already won, and we're just asking, how do you want to make yourself known in the time before we actually receive an inheritance that you reserve for us? So there is something that we look to, we understand, God has this in his hands. There are two words that I shared today. One was a word that God has for the world, and that word is relationship. And whether you're here this morning or whether you're streaming on uh, your personal devices at home, I hope that you heard the word that was for you. The word for the world is relationship. The word for the church is prayer. We need to be a people of prayer. The essentialness of prayer will go a long way as we understand God's purpose and call in our lives. God has revealed his word to us. The question is, have we heard it? And even the deeper question is, will we do it? This is going to be a little different for us, I know, in our 11 o'clock service. And we're still forming how this will take place. There are two boxes that we put our offerings in right now. We won't pass plates for a while. I'm not sure where they'll come back. But right now, we do know that an offering is a part of your worship. It's a part of your giving to the Lord, and we're grateful that you've done that. Our church has been blessed with your faithfulness. So here in just a moment, I'm going to lead us in a prayer. And then after I pray, there's going to be some music that's going to be played, and that will be your chance to stand and go put your offering in the box if you have one today. Or you could come forward if God has given you a decision that you need to make today. Having heard his word, where are you in response to that? But even if you don't come forward, or even if you don't have an offering to place in the box today, I want to ask you to do something else. I believe with all my heart that God has us meet on a weekly basis like this. I believe that he has something to say to us. I believe he speaks to me from you, and I hope that he speaks to you from me. And I know that there are things happening that our church would be encouraged by if we hear what is going on in your life. And so if God is calling you to a response today, whether to be a deeper prayer person, to receive Jesus in your life as Lord and Savior, to join this church, whatever it may be, if you don't do that here, let me encourage you to do what we're asking those who are streaming to do, is to go home and go to our website and our connect button and let us know what God is doing in your life. And then give us an opportunity to rejoice with you and to share with you the goodness that God has. There are next steps that we would love to share with those who want to receive Christ. There are next steps we'd want to share with those who want to join our church. And you can do so here in a moment after I pray. You can come forward. We'll share with you publicly. Or you can go home and click on that connect button and let us know what God is doing in your life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word it is holy, it is true, it is just. And we recognize that there's a battle going on even today, that, that even in the church, even as we come sit in this building, there are so many conflicts that take place, and we, we sometimes get so confused, and, and we need to know and understand that even the spiritual battle for the attention of our mind so we can focus to hear what you have to say. But God, our prayer is that, that you would make yourself known to us, and that we would have heard one of two words today and as a person in the world that doesn't know you to know that you desire for us to have a relationship and that you've given us that opportunity through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Savior. And for those of us who know you in Christ, that your word to us is that we need to be a people that pray. Pray at all times, in all situations, all prayers, and especially to be alert and pray for all the other believers and all the other Christians, all the other saints. Father, would you take this time that we have to give to you 
Continue to reveal yourself to us and help us to be obedient to that which you say. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand. For a moment or two, there'll just be some prayer, some music's playing, and if you'd like to give an offering, this would be your chance to do so as a part of your worship today. Or if you have a decision to come and share with one of our ministers, you can come and do that. Thank you guests and Trinity Baptist Church members a lot for choosing to connect with us today in this way. We trust that we've all heard from God as we've made ourselves available to Him. We would love to hear from you. Guests, if you can make your way to that guest button one more time, we would love for you to fill out our guest registration so we can learn a little bit more about you and let you find out that we can share with you also some information about Trinity Baptist Church. Members and guests alike, there's a place there that you can share prayer requests that we would share with our ministerial team. If you need to speak with someone right now, there are some people standing by phones at 830-895-0100 to answer your call. Again, that number, 830-895-0100. Thanks again for joining us. Have an awesome week. And we trust that we will have an opportunity to connect again. God bless.